21.3. Join the conversation on the most relevant issues affecting the workplace, as well as the human resource patterns being positioned to solve them on the office. Get notifications on available job listings and advice on how to apply from featured experts in the industry every Thursday from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Only on Lake Sox 91.3. Welcome to the office. It's Lagos Talks 91.3. My name is Michelle Agu. We have a special guest joining us today, but before I introduce my guest, I'd like to remind you that the office is proudly brought to you by the Chartered Institute of Personal Management of Nigeria and Lagos Talks 91.3. Now, today we'll be discussing effective communication in the workplace. Communication is very, very important. And to do this with me is my guest, who is the head, HR Administration and Communications, Transport Service Limited. He has over uh, 20 years of experience, which spans uh, consulting, not-for-profit, telecoms, pharmaceuticals, transport, logistics, covering all facets of leadership and organization development, as well as talent management and development, learning, leadership and development, performance culture, performance management, graduate recruitment, organizational design, and effective employer branding, ETC. My guest, she is currently responsible for the human resources and corporate communication strategy for Transport Services Limited, leading an inspiring transformation agenda to position TSL, that is Transport Service Limited, as number one product handling business in Sub-Saharan Africa. She has experience working across markets in Africa and with key stakeholders from all around the globe. She's driven, intensely innovative, passionate about change and always looking for a better way to deliver her objectives. Now, my guest is passionate about developing African talents through her additional role as board chair, street projects uh, foundation. She invests her time strategically leading the discussion and projects on youth employability through creative skills. All right, my guest today is Kelechi Vera Olawoyi, FCIPM, Head HR Administration and Communications of Transport Services Limited. Welcome to the office, ma'am. We're glad that you could join us today. Thank you, Michelle. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah. Yes, we'll be discussing effective communication in the workplace. Communication is very important everywhere, in family, in school, with friendship, relationships. But when it comes to the workplace, it's important to have effective communication because it all uh, works towards the objectives and goals of the organization. But before... Um, we get into the questions because I have loads of questions as regards today's topic. I'd like to remind everyone listening, our listeners, that they can be, you out there can be a part of the conversation. You can tweet at Lagos Talks 913, use the hashtag the office, or call the phone line 0809-234-5913. Now, yes, so what do you mean by effective communication? That is, when can we say that a communication is effective? Thank you, Michelle. So communication can be said to be effective when the recipient understands the message, hmm. not necessarily taking, message. taking action, okay. but understands the message. So basically, it's the process of exchanging ideas, exchanging thoughts, opinions, knowledge, and of course, other data, so that the message is received and understood with clarity 
and purpose. It's really important with respect to clarity and purpose. Why is this message being sent? What is the purpose of this message? And the recipient must understand that, not just I've received this message, but what is the purpose of this message and what am I supposed to do with it? Right. right. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's it's all about understanding the message. When the when the when the message is fully understood, we can say a communication, the communication has been effective. But but what's the difference when there's no action? What do we call that? Well, so there are several kinds of communication, Michelle. There are some communication that is for your information only. Okay. <laughs> All right. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you because you need to know. I'm not expecting you to act on it. And there are others, and I'm and I'm speaking to the workplace. There are others where either an approval is required or some feedback is required. Mm -hmm. or some action some other action is required <laughs> so not all communication is meant to have a corresponding action the important right. thing is the purpose to which the communication mm -hmm. was sent is understood mm -hmm. by the recipient that's it now if you're expecting if there is a follow-up action expected from that communication uh, we can also say it's been effective You can say it's been effective, yes, but like I said, it really ends at, at whether the recipient understood the purpose of the communication. That's really where it ends. Anything else is an icing on the cake. All right. Now, why is good workplace oh, yeah. communication important? Why is it important in the workplace? Now, this is a critical question, and I'm, I'm thank you for asking that. Um, good communication in the workplace ensures that employees have the information they need to perform well. Now, it's important for me to stress this because in a lot of organizations, um, well, whether it's the leadership or line managers or HODs don't necessarily give all the information that an employee requires to perform well on their job. So this is really important. Good communication builds a positive work environment. It also eliminates inefficiencies. So if I know what you expect me to do, I will go ahead and do it rather than guessing or trying to understand what else you are saying that you are not saying. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Effective communication also should accurately convey information while maintaining or improving human relationships. So I am communicating to you that my relationship with you must not be broken. Now, do I understand that there's some communication that is difficult? Absolutely. All right. But in, in, in passing across that difficult communication, it shouldn't shatter or destroy completely that relationship. And communication is also important in the workplace because it, it also boosts employee morale, engagement, productivity, and satisfaction. Now, every single change initiative or transformation initiative or measure and acquisition that you ever see, communication is a lifeblood and is a game changer that makes such initiative successful or unsuccessful. Right. Okay. Well, can you share some tips on, you know, for improving and ensuring effective communication in the workplace? What are some tips? Awesome. Now, I'm going to do this a little differently because there's a certain part of communication that people don't necessarily recognize, and that is understanding how behavioral types affect communication. Now, according to what we call DISC, DISC is, um, I'm trying to simplify it as possible, DISC is a, uh, it's a personality uh, model or behavioral model that captures or categorizes people into four dis distinct boxes. Now, it does say that for most of us, we sort of flow in between all of the boxes, all right? Because not no one individual is in a particular box. However, there are people who have dominant um, traits of a particular box. And so the, a person's behavioral um, communication style is a combination of all of these disc factors. And I will tell you what disc is. Now, the four disc factors are what you call dominance, influencing, steadiness and compliance all right now when you find people who are 
in the C and the D, which is the compliance and the steadiness, those people are referred to people who are task focused. All right. Now, they are more intent on getting things done. So they're not really your chatty type of people. They're not really the kind of people that when you want to communicate with them, you start asking them, how is your family or how is your baby? They get pretty irritated, like, why are you asking me that? All right. And mm -hmm. it's important for us to understand this because I've, I have seen this time and time again over 20 years. And I've understood that for you to be able to communicate effectively for, with, with people, you must understand what these traits are or where they are in the, on, on the disc, um, um, on the diagram. And also for the people who are um, what you call the dominant D, the D and the S's, okay, which is, um, sorry, the D and the I, which is influencing, such people are usually very direct people. All right. Mm -hmm. They like a little bit of they like a little bit of communication. They love to interact with people. They want to be well liked, you know. And so when you are coming to communicate with such people, you you need to have relationship in mind. However, for the dominant D, let me just state it there. For the dominant D, the dominant D would like you to communicate with them directly. So go straight to the point. Don't beat around the bush. Okay. So when you're coming to the dominant D, don't start with a long story. Get to, the, get to the task. What do you want me to do? And what is the issue? So it's important that we understand all of this so that we know where to categorize people and how to approach them to get the very best out of them. Now, if you're asking me about okay, stepping away from the complex behavioral um, uh, you know, status of, of, of individual, how do I you know, also build my, my communication skills? I would say, outside of understanding the behavioral types of people, mm -hmm. also work on your personal communication skills. You need mm -hmm. to learn to build rapport. Don't just walk up to people and, and just start yakking. You need mm -hmm. to learn how to build rapport. So start by understanding what is, the, what is the first thing I should say to this individual, especially when perhaps you're spoken, you speaking to someone who is well-known. It's important for you to do a little bit of research about that individual and when you engage them in, in conversation you can start on on a topic that they are passionate about so look out also for non-verbal um, 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 cues so if somebody is talking with you or you're speaking with somebody and their arms are, are akimbo or or um or held close to their chest you understand very quickly that those people do like their personal space and don't like very personal conversation so you need to know how to take a cue or someone is talking to you they're not looking at you is telling you they're not really interested in having this conversation with you so these are the kind of things and then also learn to give feedback now this is an area where a lot of us fail we some of us think that giving feedback means putting the hard stuff in between layers and layers of nice things at the end of it all People, the, the, the individual would have lost the feedback, especially when it's a negative um, um, feedback. So it's important to go straight to the point, but couch your feedback in a way that can make impact and the person understands it, understands it and it's not broken. So how do you give act, uh, feedback? By active listening. And what does active listening mean? It means asking questions, listening to understand, paraphrasing some of the sentences or things that they are saying to you, getting some clarification statements, and then summarizing. And of course, questions to understand. A lot of us don't ask questions. So we make a lot of assumptions, mm -hmm. and then we always come out with the wrong um, information. So ask questions. And then the other one that I would like to put here, which might be controversial, but it's absolutely true. Take into, con um, into consideration age and cultural differences in communication. I say this all the time. I'm an Igbo woman and I'm married to a um, Yoruba man. How I would communicate with somebody older than me who is Igbo is completely different from how I would communicate with someone who is older than me. That, that is Yoruba. All right. So we need to understand those cultural contexts. And it's not about being woke. And it's not about being, 
you know, uh, well, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I need to come full of their first name and, and all of that. It's about understanding how best to reach someone that will make them am amenable to listening to you. Okay, so for instance, I know that many of the organizations, you know, say first name basis, you know, because that's that's what they believe is the right way to break down the barriers. And to some extent, it is correct. But one of the things that I have found out also is that some of those things don't actually work. And it's not because you're a Nigerian company or a non-Nigerian company. It simply is. We have, a lot of us have strong um, foundations, teeth in culture that shape the way we behave and the way we approach life. Now, you, you, you will do yourself a disservice if you don't take those things into consideration. So, for instance, if I'm speaking to someone who is 60, 60 years old or 65 years old, um, I would rather not call them by their first name, except I'm invited to. So there's also the bit of etiquette around that. So when I'm meeting someone for the first time or I'm writing to someone for the first time, I shouldn't assume I have the the audacity or I have the privilege of calling them by their first name. So etiquette demands that I I I um, speak to them based on their title. And then they would reciprocate to say, oh, please call me this or please call me that. So those are the things that I'm missing. And I find out that a lot of people before they even start to go, they've already shut down that door. They've closed that door. The person that they really want to receive the communication is no longer opening, um, open to listening to you know, their ideas. All right. Now, bringing it back into the HR profession, what roles do the HR play or does the HR play to ensure that great vines are eliminated and to the barest minimum in organizations? Mm. You know, Grapevine, eliminating grapevine um, conversation, it's actually a leadership responsibility. It's not HR alone, all right? And I say this all the time because people seem to think that HR has a magic wand and we just wave it and everything is okay. No. Um, why do grapevine thrive when there's insufficient communication, when there's no clarity, and when there's no role modeling. So the leaders are behaving contrary to what they are saying or what they, they say the expectations are. So how do you deal with it, not just from an HR perspective, but from a leadership perspective? First of all, keep your employees informed. One of the worst things you can do to yourself is to not say anything and then allow employees to make up their own minds <laughs> and tell them, um, Trust me, very imaginative mind. People can think of all sorts of theories and conspiracies. And before you know it, everything has been blown out of the person. So it's important to keep them informed. Now, knowing what to say, it's another ball game. All right. While there are some information that is very sensitive and it's not, uh, it's not everyone that needs to know the detail, you need to understand what it is you can tell or you can say without divulging all the uh, deep secrets that you don't want the rest of the business to you know, have access to. Number two, choose the right um, communication um, um, the channel to build trust, mm -hmm. all right? So what are the right, where, how do you want to talk to them? Do you want to talk to them through town halls? Do you want to speak through emails? Is it a WhatsApp group? What is the best way that employees believe that if I get information from my leadership, um, through this medium, I, I trust that they mean well and I trust that they really want to say something to me. So choose the right channel to build trust because trust actually, Michelle, is the foundation of communication. Without trust, no communication is happening. I forgot to say you know, that. Number three, eliminate information overload in the workplace. So while you want to communicate, don't also over communicate. There's some things you don't say um, for instance, if, if the business is going through a challenging time and it's really, really difficult, some of the things you can say to, to the organization or to employees is that the business is going through a challenging time. However, we have the tools to make sure that we, we, we succeed or, or we, we thrive through this, um, this situation. So I'm asking everyone to get their hands on the plow Let's all work together and we will surely come through this. And I, as a leader, I will continue to give you updates and information, but I, I, I can tell you for sure 
that it is something that we can all succeed at. Now, that is different from saying the business is going through a tough time. In fact, we cannot pay salary. In fact, our, our overdraft, the bank has called everything. You know, <laughs> they're just things that you don't say. You have to uh, make sure that you measure your words, paint the picture, don't overpaint, and don't create this um, 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 this uh, a despair. Then also engage your employees in a two-way daily conversation. So as a line manager or as a leader, or even as an employee, engage, engage, engage. Conversations or communication should never be just top bottom. It should be bottom up, bottom up. It should be sideways. Communication should flow freely. And then finally, as an organization and as an HR uh, team, Spot your internal influencers. You have people in an organization, when they stand up to speak or when they have an opinion, people naturally gravitate towards those people. So spot them and ensure that you, are, you, are, you bring them on board on the business strategy, on the business agenda, and they now, in return, become your evangelist to the rest of the business. All right. Now, on a personal level, on an individual level, how can one horn their communication skills? Okay, so I think we've mentioned a, a little bit around that, but some of the things I would like to say is, first of all, be a learner. You've got to learn. Learn, 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 and then read. A lot of people don't read. Therefore, they don't know how to communicate. And communication also Michelle, it's not just about speaking. It's also about written communication. One of the challenges we have in Nigeria today is ability to write and write properly, especially business communication. And how do you learn how to write or even speak? It's speaking by reading. When you read wide and you read good books, not trashy books, but good books, you learn new words, you, you learn how sentences are formed, you learn how words are used in situations. So read and then practice. Practice, practice, practice. Okay. Is there a relationship between emotional intelligence and communication? How do we impact? How do, how do they impact each other, if at all? Okay, so let me tell you, there, there are five domains of, of emotional intelligence. There's what you call self-awareness, there's self-regulation, there's social awareness, and there's relationship management, and also what you call internal or intrinsic motivation. Now, each of these domains can help a leader face any crisis with lower levels of stress, fewer unintended um, um, issues or uh, consequences, and better communication. So EQ is directly tied to communication. So remember when we spoke about the DISC, all right? This is also speaking to understanding people's behavioral patterns and how those behavioral patterns affect communication or how they want to receive communication or even give communication. So EQ is definitely tied to communication because EQ simply means uh, being able to build relationships, being able to reduce your team stress, diffuse uh, conflict, improve job satisfaction simply because you are self-aware, you also are, be, are able to self-regulate yourself, so you don't say whatever comes to your mind, you regulate yourself. You, are, you, you have a good understanding of the environment around you, so you're able to take into context cultural issues, age issues, personal issues, behavioral issues, and then you also learn how to manage um, relationships. Now, also, there are 12 factors in emotional intelligence that speak directly to communication. Now, the first one is um, self-awareness. I have mentioned that self-control, adaptability. So being able to um, adapt or, or conform to a certain situation so you can bring out the very best communication. Um, achievement, orientation, positive outlook, Empathy, empathy is so key because how would I want to listen to you if I don't believe that you you understand where where I'm coming from and that you can actually uh, feel where I'm coming from or you're or you're sitting in my shoes? So very important. Um, organizational awareness. So for communication to be effective, you've got to understand the organization that you work for, which is why 
um, communication for one organization is distinctly different from another. They're never the same. It is always contextual and situational. Then, of course, there's influence. How, how much influence do you have? How are you able to, to, to turn a thought or a you know, line of conversation? Um, also about being able to coach and mentor people, uh, being able to manage conflicts, being able to work in a team, and, of course, being able to be an inspirational leader. These are all the facets and competences of emotional intelligence that speak to your ability to communicate effectively. All right. Any final words before we go? Well, my last word or my final words for this particular um, session would be to be an effective communicator. You've got to understand what communication is and you've got to understand what message that you want to craft. You also have got to understand what medium you want to use. And then finally, you want to be sure who your audience is is so those are the things i would like people to take away um in addition to everything else i have said communication is a big deal communication has been known to destroy or build up organizations so it, it is a big deal and i would i would ask every organization that doesn't have a a corporate communication department to please have one in place and also train leaders to be able to communicate thank you thank you we appreciate you for joining us today on to, uh, the office and we do hope that you will join us again and uh be a part of this session to share more uh, and educate us especially as regards uh better ways to communicate uh moving forward on the personal level on um you know the hr sector as well as well as employees in general and it's, if there's one takeaway for me i'll, I'll say is the importance of reading learning how to read, making it a habit, uh, have very good communication skills because communication goes beyond just speaking and listening. You know, it's important mm -hmm. to also comprehend, you know, Absolutely. be able, yeah, you have to comprehend, you have to understand things. Uh, people cannot repeat things over and over again and you see, and you just can't get the message. You have to look for ways to also be emotionally intelligent and uh, recognize culture, recognize there's a place for culture in effective communication. I think that's also a, a sticking point that we might be missing in our society today. So yeah. thank you for, for bringing that up. Uh, it's very important. Sometimes it goes, it's overlooked uh, because of how woke or more than we are becoming as a society. But it's, it's really good to hear that. It's refreshing to hear you say that. Thank you so much for this session and for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. All the All right. best. All right. Bye -bye. Have a beautiful evening. Bye. All right. That's it with us today for uh, The Office. We'll be back next week, Thursday from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now, coming up uh, next is Critical Thinking. Don't go anywhere. By the way, my guest today was Mrs. Kelechi Vera Ola Wonyi. All right. FCIPM. She's the head HR administration and communications at Transport Service Limited. And she was our guest today. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>